I've got this Wemo wireless switch AC outlet that I wanted to take apart and see what's inside as well as I want to repurpose it. So it's basically got a Wemo wireless module in here, but it's also got an AC relay switching circuit that can take a logic level control from the wireless module and turn AC on and off. So I want to be able to hack into this and actually do two things. I want to be able to have my own interface circuit to be able to easily switch AC on and off. And I could also use this Wemo module to connect up to Wi-Fi. And I know I can at least have one logic control output so I can turn other things on and off. So of course I could just make my own AC relay circuit and get an outlet and hook it all up. But if I can just maybe have a wire connector hanging off the side or the back of this, this can make a good prototyping platform. Otherwise, I'm just curious what's inside. So I've already taken the screws out. There were two hidden under the labels and two right here. And they were all these annoying security triangle screws that I had to figure out how to get out without a triangle bit. I did a quick video on how I got that to work. I'll link that below. So I'm ready to pull this apart. It kind of looks like it's already severed, but that's just the design. It's got this restore button up here. It's a good tactile button. And there's this manual power on off button here if you don't want to use wireless to turn on the outlet. So this comes apart actually right there. That's just decoration. The cover slides off where it plugs into the wall. And there it is. It's in two sections. There's a higher voltage circuit right here where AC comes in from the wall. And there's going to be some sort of power supply, I think, right here. And there's a, looks like a connector with three wires populated going over to this, looks like the wireless board. There's the tactile switch on the top of the unit. Looks like the printed antenna here and a processor. And it looks like this board snaps in and this one's got two screws here and the other end gets held in by those security screws when the enclosure is put together. So it looks like I have to take out a couple of screws and these are not security. I guess if you get this far, you've already breached the perimeter. There's no need to secure it any further. The device has fallen. So I'll take those out. So I should take all this stuff out of the enclosure to get a look at both sides of the boards. So these contacts to plug in for the AC input are all individual terminals soldered straight to the board and it looks like it's all done very well, very solid, and lots of heavy traces. Feels like there's no risk of any breaking or stressing on these joints. And there's a lot of high voltage separation slots in the board all through here, separating out all of this high power stuff. So the part that you plug your AC device into is also terminals soldered straight to the board. And it looks like they directly soldered these three wires that go board to board and hot glued it. And it has a plug over here. So I'm going to separate that and pull this board out. It looks like the wireless logic board just clips in, so it should just come right out. Simple. No problem. Don't need this. So there's the whole thing. And I have discharged all of this, so I can easily handle this. But I'm going to unplug this to make it more convenient to evaluate. So it looks like the main AC comes into this BR1. So that'll be a bridge rectifier. Then there's two filter capacitors here across the DC output of the bridge rectifier. And it looks like we go over here to a regulator switcher. Looks like a fancy transformer with a lot of pins. There's a diode. LNK606D6 is what's written on the chip. I don't know if it's showing up clearly on camera, but I can see it myself. The LNK606 from Power Integrations is a switcher for adapters and chargers. 
So it's meant to simplify the external components needed to get the job done. It's got some fancy features. It provides tight output voltage and current regulation, compensates for transformer and other tolerances. It's got a wide input voltage, 85 to 265 AC, and this 606 part can do 5.5 to 6 watts. I guess adapter means in, in an enclosure, so that will be us. We can do 5.5 watts. And here they're just showing a typical example circuit. This one's for a USB charger power supply. So they can take an AC input, do a bridge rectifier to get DC, capacitor, inductor, filtering, switcher circuit, fancy transformer with a whole lot of connections on it, and finally a 5 volt, 555 milliamp output in this circuit. So this input filter here, we have a Pi network with a shunt capacitor, series inductor, shunt capacitor. These form a Pi filter which attenuates conducted differential noise. So this helps meet EMI regulations and so on. So that looks like a full featured component that they are using for their power supply. Along with this AC to DC bridge rectifier section, it looks like we have a VR1 varistor MOV. And I think this reddish thing beside it is a 250 volt fuse. So that's really mostly what's on here. It's AC in and then a switching regulator. Then we have our relay. We can handle 15 amps, 125 volts AC. And we have our three pin connector going to the other board. So I'm going to assume for now this is going to be 5 volts ground and then the white one would be a signal to turn on the relay. Here's our transistor and then we go to the coil of the relay and we have a diode across the coil for spike suppression when the relay turns off. So I'm going to probe this and see what's going on. Okay, first I'll check that the white pin goes there. Okay. Now, this is the transistor, so, and the white wire goes straight to it. So, this might be easier than I thought. So, now that it looks obvious what I need to do with this one to get it tested, I'll lay this aside, and here's the Logic wireless board. So, we have this Rawlink, Raylink, RT5350. It looks like this is a printed PCB antenna coming around here. So this RT5350 processor, it's a system on chip that combines 802.11n, a 360 megahertz core. You only need few external components for 2.4 gigahertz wireless products. And it has an embedded PA and LNA for the wireless. So really, all you need outside the chip is a little bit of impedance matching network and an antenna. And it looks like the only thing on the back is a couple of memory chips and some decoupling capacitors and such. So this looks like SD RAM, and this looks like some sort of serial flash, maybe 128 megabit, and maybe a little indicator dot to show it's been flashed. The ESMT SD RAM chip 12L-256-1616 is what we have on the board. We have the A-6T variant, which is 166 MHz TSOP2 package. So we have four banks of four million words of 16 bits. I couldn't easily locate a datasheet for that flash part, but, well, it's just going to be some similar generic sounding thing anyway. So the connector that has three wires goes into a header with five pins. Maybe some sort of serial programming or debugging sort of thing. Looks like we have another power supply switcher here. And right here it looks like a bunch of test pads, probably for a test fixture to do programming or debug in production. So this looks like the onboard antenna and some impedance matching Pi network stuff. And it looks like a solder blob here going over to the main circuit area. Maybe they have a jumper option here where they can hook up some sort of a test SMA connector for bench testing of the signal strength. So I'm not really sure what all these little intricate things are. This little six pin IC looking thing says A714A. I couldn't really find any search results on that. 
And these look like they might be something like a bank of configuration pull up or pull down resistors, probably to configure the boot mode. So that's basically it. It looks like a system on a chip that can do Wi-Fi as well, a power supply for it, and its memory. So I'm thinking if I want to take this out of the wall plug switch application, give it power, and take this one output control signal from it, maybe I can use this as my own Wemo circuit to at least control one output. Maybe that'll be something for a future project. Okay, I'm set up with a test to try manually controlling the relay on this thing. I have this Wemo switch plugged into an extension cord which has its own power bar switch farther away for safety. So right now it's off. And I have a fan that I plugged in as my test to see if I can get the relay to trigger the fan. So this wireless part of the circuit is not needed. So I just have the connector that comes from the main board normally goes to this board to give it 5 volts ground and have a control signal in. And I made my own little makeshift pin connection here because I don't have any of these connectors. I think it's a JST connector, something like that and I need really thin wires to go in there. So these little blue body precision resistors have really thin legs on it and those fit perfectly. So I took three of these resistors, cut a part of the leg off, leaving enough so it can still be useful, and I turned it into a corn rowing resistor. So those can just go like that vertically in the breadboard now. And these are just stored over here, they're not part of this experiment. So I soldered on three wires to three of those resistor legs, used heat shrink and stuck them in and now I can get 5 volts ground and relay activation signal. So right now everything is plugged in and ready to go but there's no main AC. When I turn on the AC, the pull down resistor on the board is going to keep the relay disengaged. And so far all I've got is those three wires broken out here, there's nothing really connected. So I'll turn on the AC main power, and the fan is not running, which is fine. So the first thing I wanted to do is double check between the power and ground, it is a 5 volt DC power supply. So if I give this control input 5 volts, it should turn on the fan. And there it is. Success! Now I've got this prototyping platform where I can have an AC relay switch, a 5 volt power supply, and an enable logic level control. And later I'll try this out, and hopefully this will allow me to wirelessly talk to this as a Wemo device and control one output. And I have the option of putting it all back together, but what fun would that be? So that was a successful teardown and hack. Not bad at all.